Today I'm going to show you five cookers that every good backyard should have. So if you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that red button, then tap that bell to make sure that you don't miss a thing. And as always, we love it when you share our videos and comment down below. So I'm a firm believer in variety when it comes to cooking, especially in the backyard. There's different times of year that certain cookers work better than others, and there's certainly different dishes that will benefit from a different process. So whatever opinions you may have on certain cookers, this is not the place where we're going to debate those differences or what cooks something better than another. What I'm going to show you here today is my thoughts on what a good backyard should have if you have room. Obviously not everyone has room, so you pick what cooker works best for you and you perfect it. So I'm not going to really show you these in any particular order. Judge for yourself on what's going to work best for you and then you make the final decision. Okay, so the first cooker that we're going to start off with today is gas. Now we all have opinions on gas, some like it more than others. There's definitely strong opinions out there on what this gas grill can do for you. I choose to put it in my backyard for a couple simple reasons. It's fast, it's clean, and it's always ready to go. Well, that's as long as you have a propane bottle that's full. But these things are very versatile as well. You can plug them into your house natural gas with just a couple minor modifications. And for the most part, they're pretty simple to clean. They're available everywhere you break something on it, parts can be purchased online. So some of the things that I've cooked a lot on this are sliders and steaks. You know, I've heard that you get that gas taste, but not the way I cook. I go full blast. I, I go balls to the wall or I don't cook on it at all. But I've seen guys smoke with these things. I've seen people grill. My particular gas grill has a little side burner section, which is great for boiling water. You could do that in the cooking chamber as well. I got four burners on this thing. I can do a hot on one side with a cool zone on the other side. I can do offset smoking. Again, if I wanted to and if I found it necessary. Because I don't care where you live, at some point you're going to run out of wood. You might even run out of charcoal. And that is why I'm putting this on number five, a gas grill. So we all know somebody that has either a Blackstone or a Camp Chef griddle. They're super versatile, you can cook with them any time of year just like a gas grill. Well, they are actually a gas grill. You just don't have direct contact with any kind of gas flavor. So the one we have happens to be a 360 Cuisinart grill. It's about two feet across. You season the steel cooktop like you would any cast iron. It has a slight curve to it and a 360 degree drip pan all the way around. It even has this handy little shelf that I really like a lot, and the footprint is very small. It's got four castering wheels. You can roll it around on any kind of surface that you need to. It's sturdy, and I got this thing at Walmart for less than 200 bucks. But the important thing to take away from here is get yourself a flat top griddle of some kind, whether that be a Cuisinart 360, Blackstone, Camp Chef, or any a number of generic uh, manufacturers there are because these things are versatile, they're great for smash burgers and cooking just about anything. Now a lot of people refuse to go over to the pellet smoker or, or to include that in their arsenal of cookers in their backyard. But I'm a firm believer, in fact, I used to build offset smokers. I built several of them. My very first video here on YouTube is a review of my ugly drum smoker. I think I'll let that plane go by. But after I sold my last smoker, the very next thing I did was go out and buy one of these Traeger grills. And that was in about 2013, so about seven years ago. And so far, this Traeger has not let me down. Yes, I've had a few blowbacks into the auger, and that's because I didn't feed it pellets that were properly dried. I let them sit outside where they absorb moisture, and, there was, and the auger stopped working. When the auger stopped pushing through, and they start breaking apart and then I got a, a flame back through the auger. That was my fault and that's a common problem with these Traeger grills. So if you treat them right, clean them, do the proper maintenance and take care of them, these things will last you a long time. My model is a Traeger Little Tex 22 inch, which is the size of the opening of the cook chamber. Whereas traditional offset stick burners, it's the diameter of the pipe that they use. This also has a fairly large hopper 
Although for overnight cooks, I've had to increase its size with cardboard in order to go to sleep for six hours. And as long as this cooker has enough electricity, which I'm pretty sure you're not going to run out of anytime soon, and plenty of dry pellets, this thing will run all night long. Now I've done a few modifications to mine. I've got this extended insulated smokestack, which helps me achieve higher temperatures for these older triggers. I also retrofitted this folding shelf, both of which I have videos, so go check those out. I've also installed a very nice Tell Truth monitor right next to the smokestack, just to let me know that digital readout is telling the truth. So again, number three on my list is a pellet grill. No matter what your opinions are, no backyard should be without these. In fact, if you don't have a lot of room for some of the bigger cookers, get yourself a pellet grill, you can't go wrong. So I've cooked brisket, ribs, pork butt, meatloaf, just about anything you can think of I've done on this Traeger. I've had great results with smoke rings and smoke flavor. Again, depending on the kind of pellets you use, you'll have different results. Awesome overlooked feature of a pellet grill is that there's one for almost every budget out there. Everyone's making a pellet grill nowadays, even Weber got into the fray with the smoke fire. Although that's more of a high-end machine, they have pellet grills now under $400 and for that price point you can't go wrong and that's why it's in my backyard. Alright, next on my list for the five must-have cookers for your backyard is the Weber kettle. Since its introduction in 1952 or 55, basically a really long time ago, this thing has been a game changer. It was originally designed by a gentleman that worked at Weber Metalworks somewhere in Chicago, I believe. And it was a buoy that they lopped off the top and put a lid on it. And that was the original Weber kettle. Over the years, it's evolved. There's hundreds of international owners groups and there's hundreds of different colors and styles to choose from. It really is an amazing grill. The reason why no backyard should be without a charcoal grill is pretty simple. They're inexpensive, charcoal is readily available anywhere, and you can cook anything on them. I just did a four and a half hour cook with a prime rib. It came out terrific. I'll put a link to a video up here so you guys can go check it out. It's a wonderful grill. It takes well to modifications. There's thousands of accessories for these things. And really, go get yourself a Weber uh, 18, 22, or 26, or even that big, uh, I don't know what it's called, a cattleman or something, rancher. It's a giant. Um, get yourself one. You won't be disappointed. Take care of it. It will literally last forever. Now, the one I have here is the Weber Kettle 22 Performer. It came almost exactly how you see it here. There's only a couple things I did to it. Actually, there's only one thing I did to it, and that was add a Tell True thermometer on the exhaust side of the lid. And that's all I needed to do to it. As far as I'm concerned, this thing is, is perfect right out of the box. Again, there's accessories for this that you can get. Um, they make a great gift, and who doesn't like a Weber? All right, last but not least, the stick burning offset smoker. Now as far as I'm concerned, if you've got a backyard big enough for one of these babies, go for it. This is gonna be the number one thing that you need to have in your backyard if you're gonna make real honest to goodness smoke barbecue. There's nothing else on this plant that's going to give you better smoke flavor for the money than one of these. There's hundreds of manufacturers ranging from small garage workshops to corporate big box corporations. You can literally buy one of these at your corner hardware store. For budgets well under $300 all the way up to $10,000, depending on what your operation needs, there's one of these smokers that's right for you. This one happens to be a Yoder loaded Wichita, and it's from Kansas. I found it locally at the barbecue headquarters in Simi Valley, and it was just on a whim that me and the Sassy Kitchen Queen were coming back from Ikea, and we really wanted a smoker, and we thought, hey, as we're driving through Simi Valley, let's go take a look at it. They had this baby sitting on a pallet 
with my name all over it and the next day i had it delivered and i do have a video of that experience if you guys want to go check it out i'm not sure of the overall size of this i just know that it's well over 600 pounds but it is actually relatively easy to move around now there are smokers that are made out of sheet metal that you can pick up on your own or ones where you're going to need a trailer or a crane to get in your backyard but again whatever it is that you're looking for there's a smoker right for you now not all of these smokers are perfect right out of the box they're not always going to match up to your cooking style and that's why they take so good to modifications the pit boss the charbroil many others take really well to some basic modifications to make your cooking experience a lot better for mine all i needed to do was seal up the two-piece smoke stack and lower or even eliminate the fire grate to get the proper airflow over the coals and really that was about all i've done so far to this smoker and it's worked out really well now it's not going to come without some requirements you're going to need the right kind of wood and definitely the right kind of time to cook on one of these things but once you perfect that in the end you're going to have some of the best tasting barbecue that you've ever had and you're going to be the envy of your cooking buddies because honestly what they're not telling you is they don't know how to cook on one of these and that's where it's going to take time learn to cook on one once you master it you're going to love it and again when you have the pellet grill you can go to bed after cooking all day on one of these and let's say it's not quite done yet you've already wrapped your brisket and you're all done with the stick burner throw it on the traeger set it for six hours wake up the next day a whole new man or woman all right guys i hope you liked the video of the top five cookers that you should have in your backyard be sure to tap that subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss a thing.